Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel, and today we have a broken Chevy. Alright, so we've got a uh, 2018 Malibu or Impala or something. Malibu. Chevy Malibu. Um, this is a fun one. So we just pushed it in. According to Asim, the guy who brought it, he's got a car lot. When he jiggles this box around, it will start. But it's a crank no start until he jiggles it around. That looks like that might have been pulled really hard. We might have found it. This might be a stupid video. Hold on. No, okay, they're they're crimped. All right, so this is a car he bought at auction. He literally brought it to us. We pulled it in. He said he left some stuff loose under the hood, so we found the box off the the lid off the box. Um, I did notice that like this coil bolt's completely missing, and these ones are all loose. So I don't know what's going on, but it is a crank no start. So we're gonna check it out. Oh, new tool also. Hi, exciting. So Autofix, Odofix, it's actually a subsidiary of Autel. It even says, powered by Autel, made in Vietnam. Um, so this is the V200 interface, the same that like a lot of the newer Autels use. So it is DOIP flexible data rate, um, and it uses a really small little tablet, and it looks exactly like an Autel, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this company reached out to me, and I normally like, I probably get like 10 a week where somebody, some company wants to send me some tool, wants me to make a video on it, and I pretty much ignore all of them unless it's something that's like I think you guys would use. Um, and this one, he, he said, hey, we're a subsidiary of Auto, and um, we have this this tool. It's called the D1 Lite. So this is definitely like a DIYer geared tool, kind of. Um, it's real small. Called the D1 Lite. Yeah, there we go. Um, it looks like a lot, like function-wise, like the MP or MK808, um, but it's, I mean, it's got the interface, so we're going to see, because like, if this was an Autel device, they recently released J2534 drivers for this. Uh, I just checked, it doesn't work with the, um, the J drivers, because it recognizes a different device, but just like the Autel, it's got a push button to help you find the OBD2 port, so let's check it out. Um, it, it may be worthwhile. I think this tool is like sub four or five hundred dollars. I know that the um, the yearly subscription is only one hundred and twenty bucks. So, like, maybe not a tool for your primary tool as a professional technician. But uh, I think for the cost, if it does, I don't know if it does like all codes. Uh, we need to see if it works with AutoAuth. That's what we need to check. But. I've used it a bunch so far. I've tried to use it on a bunch of cars. I haven't, I think I have a 22 Renegade out in the parking lot. I haven't used it yet to check. But honestly, with this whole Top Don thing going on with AutoWath, I think I'm just gonna like say, I can't promise it works for AutoWath. It doesn't say Autel. It it says Autel on it, but it says it's an auto fix or auto fix. So we're gonna go with, I don't know, on that. Um, but it does work. I tried it on my truck, tried it on this Land Rover right here. Um, which is basically a Ford that was an Evoke. So, all right, it already ID'd the VCI, it's wireless. Uh, click Diag. Again, you'll notice the screens work just like an Autel, has all the same stuff. So, it helps if I, I was looking at the screen and not the screen. Oh, you know what would help? Let's key it on. Oh, so it's Chevy, sorry, we gotta, Press and hold, one, two, three, four, five, six, on. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, jackpot. All right, so read the bin, press okay. Again, I do like it small, like typically here in the shop, if we're gonna grab an aftermarket tool, which is usually like a drivability diagnosis or like this situation, a crank no start, this will be a great tool for this if it just even reads live data. So LFV engine, LFV, 1.5. I think these have that goofy uh, valve cover that takes like six hours to pull off. Seems, it does not have topology. Does have live battery voltage, which we are low. Does it does it actually present customer concern?
Ooh. Do you hear that? Okay, I don't know. That's weird. Uh, it didn't stop cranking and I pressed it. Hello? Okay, it stopped. All right, so let's go to diagnosis. Let's do, as we always do in all systems, scan. Start with that. And he put the key in the spot. Thanks, Zach. That's annoying. Oh, let's shut that door. Shut up. Yeah, no topology button. That's... When you get used to using a topology map, it's it's really hard to get away from it. But I will say that, honestly, at the cost of this thing, I not I wouldn't gripe. I mean, with as inexpensive as this tool would be. I, again, I think it's sub $500, maybe sub $400 even. I'll put it... They sent me a link for a discount. I'll put it in the description. Um, again, uh, I don't get a kickback from that. They did give me the tool. So cool. Um, it'll be good for quick run and gun. I mean, honestly... When I grabbed it, and then I didn't have to grab grab the VCM-1 or VCMI, whatever Autel calls their big one with the scope, I was like, this is kind of nice, not grabbing the huge honking box and throwing it up there. So, um, And I've been using it quite a bit. It works quick. I mean, it's scanning slow, but it's I don't think it's the processor speed. I think it's the fact we're hooking to a late model General Motors, so it's checking all the modules. It did not ask me all the RPO options, which is kind of interesting. But it's had special functions like Venrite, Cam Crank Learn, um, all, all the stuff I would expect on most tools. There's no coding in here that I, I didn't notice anything I hooked up to. But, you know, I mean, I, realistically, I don't use it that much for that. If I'm grabbing an aftermarket tool, it's typically for a drivability diagnosis. It's not always for the button push. Now, a lot of you guys that don't have factory tooling, I get it. You're buying an aftermarket tool for the functions right for the program this which is most scan tools don't do programming it's most mostly relearns calibrations there is some coding and then some of the flagship autel models like the 909 the 919 the ultra they have bmw and mercedes programming but again that's not like directly from the manufacturer server using the manufacturer tool confirming you have the right software every time so i typically don't ever use it for that i just boot, grab the icon boot up vista or grab maybe like the autologic or something or i scan but all right, it's done. Scan go. I've just been rambling. All right, uh, report. I don't really care. Save as a PDF. Put something in there. Click save. I save a report on every car. Before we touch a car, before we diagnose anything, before we even plug stuff back in or put stuff back on, I want all the codes. It's the best way to cover your assets. Ambient air temperature sensor circuit high. Okay, brake booster, large vacuum leak detected, turn signal, keyless entry fault, interruptible retained accessory power relay circuit high. That might have, all right, keyless entry module, some interrupted accessory power relay. That's weird. I, I, I'm not really leaning towards anything immobilizer accessory key module because it cranks and doesn't start. And there's no real immobilizer codes. And that's a history code, history code, history code. Not history. Oh, maybe the intake's unplugged or something. I don't know. Anyways. Um, I'm kind of going, like, drivability diagnosis here. So I want to see, you know, is it spark, fuel, whatever. Can I see anything in the data pits? All right. So here's the thing. He drove this car here. He says that it'll start and run. A lot of times it's crank no start, and then when it does start and run, um, it runs okay. Um, he said the brakes don't work very well, so yeah, we'll be careful if we do get. Well, I guess let's try to start it a couple times. Nope. Okay. No bueno. I want trouble codes. I'm meant to go live data. So you guys are coming to come along with me. So typically you want to confirm the customer's concern. Um, we're going to, right now we're in the gathering initial data part. So we confirm the concern. It crank doesn't start. 
Um, now we're going to gather some initial data by looking at scan data, and then we're going to then we're going to do some research on the system and see, you know, based on what information we have, which direction are we going, right? Um, I'm hearing weird cranking cadences, but still, even like I'm hearing different engine speeds during cranking, and it's not like I'm hearing a dead cylinder, but there's a weird, definitely like a change in cadence, but it doesn't like a, a repeatable drop cylinder. So I don't know, might mean nothing, might mean something. So I'm going to go first to, um, I'm not really concerned with the mobilizer stuff. So let's just look at generic engine data and see if there's anything sticking out. Again, no codes really, except for the intake air temperature. So does engine speed read? Won't even crank now. Oh, there it goes. Um, engine speed does read. It's kind of cranking a little harder, like it wants to start. This might be like. Is this like out of gas? It'd be pretty funny if it's out of gas. I mean, that's. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like for real. Um. Okay. Let's take a look. Coolant temp, that's all Celsius. Let's change that. Ambient air is unplugged. Got it. Cold startup, yes. Mass air. Uh, that's pounds a minute, which is friggin' terrible. So we can actually go in there and change that individually to grams a second. Because I like to see mass air float in grams a second. Um, Throttle position. Hey, look at that. Accelerator pedal and throttle position. Respond normally. Not reading wide open throttle. Because, like, if it was reading wide open throttle erroneously, then, or, like, you know, like the gap <laughs> floor mat stuck on, on top of the accelerator pedal, it would be in a clear flood mode and would be crank no start. Map sensor looks normal. Boost pressure looks normal. Turbocharger bypass, solenoid, barrel looks normal, calculated, ambient humidity, yep, that's okay. That's about right for in the shop with the air conditioner on. Lambda, what is that, 0.45 what, 0.45 to 1? 0.54 to 1, okay, maybe. Open loop, ejector duty cycle, 4.5 milliseconds. O2 data, yep, so it's got a lambda sensor on the front. Voltage shown at 1. Low battery start vehicle. I'm trying. Fuel trims, economy, fuel in the tank, 20% ignition timing. Let's look at ignition timing. Crank request. Ignition timing, 3 degrees. That's a little weird. Battery voltage is getting low. We're going to go get a jump box. Oh, that's trying hard. Okay, fuel pressure sensor, low pressure fuel, 65 PSI, high pressure fuel, 1300. That's good. I don't think it's a fuel supply issue. Alcohol content, 10%. That seems reasonable. Current gear unknown. Well, that's interesting. It shows park on the indicator. Pressure, AC compressor, engine oil pressure. Okay, I'm not seeing anything in engine data. Engine mechanical. Crankshaft position sensor and RPM are listed separately. Okay, so they both... Engine oil, engine oil remaining conventional. Oh, that's cool. Misfire counters, knock retard. No, no, no. Torque delivery. Ambient accelerator pedal. Okay. Wide open throttle says no, so that's not our concern. I remember these ignition timing being different on cranking on most of these GMs. 
The current gear unknown thing kind of makes me wonder, but it's cranking, so I'm not like, I'm not really concerned. No, nothing really. Brake pedal position. Okay. Let's look at, let's look at some CMP actuator stuff. I don't know if this is that engine that has the TSB for the reluctor shifting. I've had a couple of those. Let's look here. Sorry, an actual solenoid valve control circuit low voltage. Oh, well, I mean, it's got low voltage while cranking. Active position counter desired idle. I don't know if... Yeah, battery voltage is really low. I need to get battery support on this. Yeah, I know. And it's telling me that. I'm trying to start the vehicle. Come on now. 65,000 miles. Wow. I don't think these camshaft readings will read while cranking, but... Oh, it is. Camshaft position, 20. Variance. Exhaust camshaft variance, 20 degrees. Hold on. Take cam intake and exhaust camshaft variance. That was 10 degrees. Okay, so that's not, let me grab my other phone. I knew my other phone was up there, so. I'm gonna grab my work phone. We're gonna look at some service information real quick. Um, let me get this vehicle pulled up. 18 Chevy Malibu. We're going to use Some of these text message ads are funny. Keith, have you ever asked yourself, why did I buy this? <laughs> yeah, a lot. I bet that's whoever, whoever bought this Malibu is probably thinking that. Enhanced privacy. Got it. All right. Moto Logic. It's literally faster for me to get on Moto Logic and find this TSB. If the, I think, I can't, I, I don't even remember if this is the engine that has that. Um, 18. So there's a TSB, and I've had a couple of them for a Chevy that has a vacuum pump that freezes up and um, causes like a the camshaft timing reluctors to literally get shifted on the cams because it like jams real hard. And now that I think about it, it's probably not too far fetched because this thing does have that vacuum pressure thing on um, code for the brake booster, which is runs off the vacuum pump. So. Um, C0299, was that code? There's a regular... No bulletins for that. Let me... Camshaft. The camshaft variance... I mean, this might just be out of time. I, but he said he started it up and drove it here, and it drove okay. So that's the part that gets me. And I don't remember ones that had that problem, like... Starting up and driving anywhere. This is the LFV 1.5. Okay. So I'm going to go to bulletins. And they break them down like by bulletins with PI preliminary information reports or like actual bulletins. Possible no start or extended crank. Uh, that's a, what PI number is that? I'm going to read it to you. PIP 5598A. I'm reading it backwards, so I'm sorry if that's not right. Give me a second here. Um, for 1.4, a uh, 1.5 LFVs, 16 to 19, all Malibus, North America, condition possible crank, no start, or extended crank, cause possible exhaust camshaft reluctor out of phase. I think, yeah, that is the, that's the one. I mean, here's the picture. I've had them tore apart before. So this is, this is Motologic. They're, um, unedited service information. Uh, we get it through advanced auto part as a tech net shop. Yeah, so they give you pictures of like, hey, there's a barcode on the camshaft and, and you're gonna like set the reluctor up and make sure that it looks like this on there um, and then set it flat and, and look. Like they give it, like GM gave a ton of great pictures. If you find the vacuum pump drive lugs are broken and or the, the exhaust camshaft reluctor is out of position, they're in place, the exhaust camshaft and the vacuum pump will be required. If needed, it'll also be necessary to locate and remove the broken vacuum pump drive lugs and all the debris. Um, what did I do on this last time? Hold up. Is this getting kind of confusing? 
Well, if it is, you guys can head over to l1training.com and I have hundreds of hours of advanced level training. We cover diagnosis, module programming, EEPROM, immobilizer, keys, board repairs, all of the great stuff you guys have questions about at l1training.com. Most of these classes are done live, so we have these Q&As where we can ask, you guys can ask questions and I answer them right there. Head on over to l1training.com and sign up and we'll see you guys there. I think if you unplug the cam sensors, this engine will run, um, running off of the crankshaft position strategy alone on the LFV engine. Now that's not true for every engine, so don't take that as true. And I might be wrong. Let's, so let's, um, yeah, this is that stupid, like the exhaust, I don't know. Um, here's the exhaust cam position sensor. Where's the intake? There's the, there's the oil control valves for the phasers on the front. My flashlight. Can't remember if it's on the back. Yeah, hold on. One second. All right, got an unplug. All right, let's see. I think I think I remember these things starting with this undone. Oh, hey, success. All right, let's look at some data and double check this because I might, I mean, okay, it's a cam phasing timing issue, but I don't know if it's the reluctor issue or if it's just like out of time, but I mean, it accelerates pretty quickly. I heard, I heard wastegate, so it built some boost. Let me go back. Uh, I'm probably, excuse me. I'm probably not gonna be able to read data um, with them unplugged, obviously. But let me see if it gives spark knock and stuff. Does it have, oh yeah, no vacuum. No vacuum assist on the brakes. Okay, okay. Right. So look, we don't have like a dead to rights diagnosis yet, but I know what we need to do to check this. And, and you know, the TSB is pretty clear. We need to pull the valve cover. So, but what pe so we have evidence for this, right? We have no vacuum assist for the brake booster. That's specifically in the TSB that uh, when the brake booster uh, freezes up and it damages the gear inside and that's why I mean we don't have any vacuum assist for the brakes um, the camshaft variation was 20 degrees off on the exhaust camshaft while cranking that's a, a major problem um, and then but the engine accelerates normally makes boost is what it sounds like um, which tells me that um, I better shut this off actually so it, it, it makes boost normally. It tells me it's probably mechanically in time, but just that reluctor is shifting. And then we remove the cam sensors and, and don't allow the PCM to see the cam position that is most likely being in, incorrectly read, then it does start. So, I mean, like, it probably has okay compression. It seems to idle okay. It uh, accelerated normally. I heard it, I didn't see it make boost, but I heard the wastegate open. So, and there was some kind of air moving at the time. And uh, of course the, the vacuum situation so i you know at this point i need to sell this customer a valve cover removal with inspection um i i can i could definitely scope this and determine that it's out of time but i can see that in data so look i'm all about scopes but the, i mean dude this little tool it gave me all the data that i needed to see uh, to confirm that the issue is is what it is right so it, as you can see it's not always the tool that makes the diagnosis it's you know the understanding of the system but this has got, let's poke around on this thing. Um, essentially, I'm going to sell this customer uh, a valve cover, but tell them that most likely it's going to need a camshaft and a vacuum pump. It's special functions. Okay, all the relearns that I would expect in a scan tool. Okay, that's I'm happy with that in the engine control module. Um, it seems to read... 16 modules that's probably about right for no it's a 2018 i expect it to have more than that to some well no this is a pretty base model chevy yeah that, that's probably about right it's got all the mission critical stuff engine brake body keyless entry transmission srs instrument cluster power steering active safety functional diagnostics hvac control module which by the way is a module back under here and then HVAC controls, which is the control head, two separate modules. The controls are not programmable, but the controller is programmable. 
navigation, passenger presence, radio, serial gateway, and telecommunications. I think I think that's it, honestly. So I did. I guess it did hit all the modules. Um, let's look in the brake control module, special functions. I kind of that's what I've been doing. Hooking up to it does it allow me to read um, calibration in module specific information? So it does allow me to look at calibration files, um, CVNs, that kind of stuff. Uh, VIN numbers in the modules. Yes. Okay. Everything I would expect to see. Then, you know, trouble codes, obviously live data, active test. So does it have bidirectional controls to turn on things? Yes. It's an Autel software. I suspect that if the button's there, it most likely works as long as the car actually has it. And then stuff like yaw rate, parking brake steering. Okay. Uh, sorry. I'm kind of, you're kind of seeing my thought process on going through and touching buttons on, on scan tools to make sure that what I expect to be in here is in here. I'm going to hit body control. I don't suspect this car to have, like, a bunch of immobilizer functions and stuff. Reset the teen driver pin. You can set a pin in the radio to where the radio won't go up above a certain volume for teen drivers. Fantastic, General Motors. Very happy. Good, 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 good idea. About to have a teenager myself. Yeah, I mean, everything that I expect to have in here is in here. All right, so the diagnostic process. First, shut the door so you don't have to listen to the dinging. Um, confirm the customer's concern. Get some initial data, visual inspection. We noted, hey, there's a bunch of stuff taken apart. I, I assume the coil thing was they were checking spark, maybe checking all the fuses, maybe trying to do some due diligence stuff. Um, so we did a visual inspection. We did a... Um, just grab some initial data to see. And, and based on what we saw in the scan tool, it told us like, look, this is probably not a theft related concern. Uh, we see fuel pressure, low side and high side fuel pressure. Uh, maybe we saw the 1300 PSI during cranking, which is a little higher than expected because uh, I guess not. No, because if camshaft timing is mechanically on, I don't know. We won't know if camshaft timing is mechanically on the last couple of these I've diagnosed. Um, only like two of the like six did the customers approve tear down and inspection um, because we can see in scan data they're at when they get them running if if we were to get this engine running and then plug the cam sensors back in they would read and clear the codes which we have to do while it's running then um, it would read camshaft variance just like it did during cranking and we would see that it's out by a bunch and that's because the reluctor shifted but mechanically the engine didn't which is why we have a good running engine so all those things kind of like added up to that's most likely what the what the concern is so we're to sell some diagnosis time and again i'm a big scope guy love scopes love to use scopes but it doesn't help in this situation we ha we we have everything we need in the scan data so um, even something like the autofix d1 light is fully capable of doing this kind of diagnosis and this is our bread and butter, like crank no starts, no crank no starts, communication issues, and then um, like check engine lights for, for circuit codes. It's just, it's our bread and butter. So realistically, a tool like this, and then uh, a pretty basic loadout of regular diagnostic equipment, which I'll make a video at some point in time showing you what we use for regular diagnostics. And um, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. But anyways, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. If you like these like diags where you come along with me, these 28 minutes of me babbling on looking at scan tools, um, let me know. Um, I'll make more of them. I we diagnosed quite a few cars here in the shop. I mean, we got a Mini Cooper, Land Rover, we got a fair share of, you know, heroes. But we've also got like 66 Mustangs and Chevy trucks back there and of course stuff like this. So um, let me know if you like it, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Also, if you want to get training on how to do this kind of stuff, check out l1training.com. Um, you can sign up for 25 bucks a month, and um, I've got classes. I've got like 60, 70 hours of classes of stuff like this, and then we run classes here all the time. We've got one coming up on the August 5th and 6th, two-day hands-on electrical and network diag. So um, we have a, a short little classroom time each, each day, about half a day of classroom uh, on Saturday, half day on Sunday, and the rest of the day, we're going to fix cars that are here, diagnose cars that are here. I don't even know what's going to be here. Like, we don't bug cars typically for that. We have before in the past. We didn't have a lot of vehicles, but now I've got like 40 vehicles here. At any point in time, there's something broke. So in two weeks from now, when we have the class, I'll have real broken vehicles here, and we'll really diagnose them live in person when it happens as a team, and we'll walk through that process. We'll create that uh, that muscle memory of doing that stuff. So... Uh, remember, if I can do it, you can do it. All those things that everyone else says. Uh, love you, Eric. <laughs> and uh, 
We'll see you guys next time, all right?